Welcome to Down Ancient Trails, the online archaeology forum of the Sharma Center for Heritage Education India. Brush the dust off long forgotten thoughts. Slice through time and space. Listen to stories in stone. Whispers of voices lost in time. Build bridges across worlds. Curious minds reach out to the past. And travel down ancient trails. A very good evening to all and I am happy to uh, invite uh, you all for the first talk on the uh, archaeology series started by Sharma Institute of Heritage and I am thankful to the Institute for giving me this opportunity to talk on this topic on uh, application of diatoms in archaeology, a review and way ahead. So today my talk will be focusing on three parts. The first part, I will introduce the diatoms, the basics of diatom and its biology. And from there onwards, I will move on to uh, using diatoms for environmental monitoring. So how you can use diatom for mon environmental monitoring in terms of river monitoring, lake monitoring, even like marine water quality monitoring. And then finally, using these characters, how we can use diatoms in the archaeological uh, applications. So this will be the uh, three part of uh, talk which I'll be focusing on. So we'll move on to the uh, first part that will be uh, introduction to diatoms. So diatoms are microorganisms. So we, uh, however, even though they are like a very tiny, uh, I put this uh, font in a very small, the term microorganism, but with the macro function in a big font, uh, signifying their role, even though they are very micro in size, but their role in ecosystem is macro in nature. So what is that uh, huge function which diatoms are doing to us is diatoms are responsible for almost 25 percentage of global oxygen produced. It's roughly uh, when we convert to every fourth breath which we take, oxygen comes exclusively from diatoms at such a huge amount is a great service diatoms are do, doing to the all the uh, animals in particular so when we go, go back to the history of diatom uh, the first diatom description was done in uh, 1703 by mr c on your left you see this uh, uh, this is a, a, a genus called uh, tabularia so he observed the pond sediment behind his home and then he communicated this piece of work to transaction to Royal Society of London. And this is the first ever documented diatoms. And immediately, not very uh, long in, in another 18, uh, in 1850, uh, Edinburgh, the most famous microbiologist of uh, uh, 18th and 19th century. So he got uh, diatom samples from different part of the India from Western. If you see this yellow highlighted area where I am moving my cursor. So he got samples from Western Ghats, Nilgiris, and Ganges, uh, Pondicherry, Trankubar. Most of the sites are maybe there are presence of uh, 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 either uh, British or Danish or French uh, uh, establishment. From there, they send sample and he described literally hundreds of species. And with uh, this monumental work of Edinburgh in 1854, we can easily claim that diatom are the first observed microorganism from Indian context. So immediately in 1900, uh, diatom also become very famous to the common people. Uh, you see here, uh, these are all the Victorian diatom arts. There are uh, some specialized people who are uh, looking at uh, diatom and isolating the diatoms under the microscope and then they make these patterns. There are thousands of patterns uh, made like, you know, you can see this owl and then 
here on the right side we can see in a very nicely symmetrically arranged patterns like something close to our rangoli so here each uh, design a particular species of diatom the diatom enthusiast go to different part of the world and collect and then arrange it in a pattern and they will sell it as a slide so this is having such a slide is like very prestigious in the victorian time even now also you can we can procure such a slide like it will cost 1500 pounds one slide uh, there are hardly like one or two people all over the world who are making um, this uh, victorian art so when we get a little bit more serious about the technical part of diatom there are uh, there are different groups of algae when we see algae the first thing which come to our mind is the green patchy thing which we see in the rivers or streams uh, when we you know go to a lake or river but uh, technically diatom can be classified into five or six different groups they are classified based on the uh, their pigments so diatoms are called as red algae green algae golden brown algae so such because of their varying levels of pigment so diatoms are having golden brown uh, pigments so they are called as uh, golden brown algae they are single cellular like on your right you will see this soap box kind of structure which is a one single algae a single diatom which is slightly opened up during when we are examining under the microscope this is uh, almost 5 uh, to 6000 times magnified image and one of the unique feature of diatom is the cell wall is made up of silica so the silica cell wall is the one of the peculiar feature of the diatom so and we see this structures in the silica cell wall and then we identify that diatom so uh, silica cell wall plays a major role in uh, taxonomy of diatom and either diatom can live as a single cell or they can also many cells put together they can also make a big change and sorry and they uh, reproduce very rapidly so one diatom can become a next in two diatom in in few minutes to few hours and they are they occur in any wet place where there are apart from the oceans and rivers and um, uh, um, uh, you know waterfalls uh, we can also find diatoms in any uh, where there are little moisture is there sometime particularly in the western india after the monsoon we get like lot of moss growing on the walls of, of like compound walls so you can find diatoms also growing in those compound walls also and one of the major feature of the diatom is environmental specific we have thousands of literally thousands of species and each species have its own unique preference so each species have a set of preference like you know i will prefer a neutral ph i will prefer you know uh, alkaline ph or like i will prefer uh, high electrolyte rich water the water with more ionic content to be to say in a common word uh, i like salt water i like you know moderate salt so every diatom have a set of preference so by looking at the diatom we can tell what is the potential environment we are this diatom was living so as i said like this is opened up during the scanning electron micrography so you can see this is like one it's a it's exactly like a soap box so on the top we see the lid and then bottom uh, so all the cell content will be inside so in order to observe diatom we boil the diatom under nitric acid so basically we oxidize everything all organic material will be oxidized we are left with only the uh, outer uh, shells and you can see that you know all these uh, features uh, these features are used for identification of diatoms so approximately as on today there are 25000 species of diatoms are there but estimated number of species is 2 million it's not a, a typographical error or something i repeat it's like estimated number of species is like 2 million or more they are extremely diverse group and they are the base of the aquatic food chain so diatoms make they are the primary producer and small insects and small fish even some of the big fish are uh, they feed uh, particularly uh, diatoms and subsequently that small fish are insects is eaten by the big fish and so on 
So they form the base of the aquatic food chains, both in the marine system as well as in the freshwater system. And there are many valuable products are coming out of diatom, such as a uh, lot of people are consuming fish, uh, cod uh, liver, uh, fish oil, which is omega-3 fatty acid. Actually, it is produced by diatom. It is consumed by the fish and stored by the fish. And we extract it from the fish. So nowadays, there are a lot of vegetable uh, omega-3 fatty acids also in the market, which is exclusively coming from the diatom. And then biofuels. So diatoms are one of the, their, uh, their storage uh, food material is stored as lipids as well. So they form one of the um, potential candidate for uh, biofuel production. And there are many others also there, like something like uh, they also produce pigments and a uh, lot of medically important components are synthesized by diatoms. So, uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, there are different parts of research in diatom. So one is taxonomy and ecology to understand what are the types of species that are there, where they are there, and then paleolimnology to understand the past uh, limnological condition. And this, which will, which I'll deal uh, uh, in another few minutes. And then diatoms are also used as a biogeographic tool. So diatoms are li uh, living uh, since uh, Jurassic. So uh, diatoms are used as a tool to understand the movement of the animals or like movement of uh, where were the, uh, to reconstruct the past landscape and those kind of things. For example, the one of the oldest known freshwater diatoms are from Nagpur area. This is from a, a coprolite of a, a dinosaur, fossilized uh, dinosaur fecal matter. So people extract a diatom and then used as a, like, a tool to reconstruct the lake. How was this lake uh, in, during the Jurassic or whatever the time? And diatoms are also used as a forensic in forensic tool to uh, find the death by drowning case. This is even though 200 year old technique, even today also uh, people use uh, 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 cases. We also in our institute train a lot of forensic people and um, uh, many uh, forensic laboratory uh, to uh, uh, train in diatom test and then biofuel as industrial application and also items are used to measure the aquatic of the stream what is the condition of the uh, rivers so uh, it's widely used in most of the country so today i will be talking about all these three uh, here so where are diatoms? They are in aquatic bodies, like on a stone, like this brown material, or on a uh, plants attached to plants uh, as a uh, growth, um, brown or greenish growth along the plant. Or some some diatom also thrive as a plankton, like just uh, you know in the column of water. So uh, usually diatom occurs in the stones, like on the uh, where you see the um, uh, brown growth on the stones or uh, a green or a brown filaments attached to the plants. Sometimes diatom also uh, occurs as a suspended in the, as a plankton in the water column or in the sediments or in, in moss or the uh, seepage uh, in the wall seepage in the, uh, particularly in the mountains. So uh, as soon as we collect diatom, uh, when we look under the microscope, they look like this with this uh, amazingly beautiful structure with nice chloroplast. You can see this golden brown chloroplast at different shapes of the chloroplast across different groups of diatom. But this will prevent us from looking at the fine silica structure. So we cannot see the uh, uh, fine silica structure, which is very important for the identification of the diatom. So what we do, as soon as we collect the sample, we bring it to the lab. Uh, on the left, when you see the field collection, so you have a stone, diatom collected from stones, uh, plants, and then sediments. We boil the diatom in nitric acid uh, in the lab, and then we further centrifuge it, and then make a permanent slide, and then we get uh, this, uh, we get to see the diatoms in the light microscope, which is on the top, and then on the uh, electron microscope on the bottom. So in this uh, slide, we see this external and internal feature of one particular species. So we see this, uh, we, we take care of, uh, we look at 
uh, these structures under a scanning electron microscope and then we uh, identify this uh, diatom. So here you can see a different set of species showing a lot of morphological uh, characters from in terms of outline and then structure of these holes. And same with the uh, uh, centric diatoms as well. So in our lab, we study diatoms particularly from the uh, biodiversity hotspots. So we see uh, in India, we have two biodiversity hotspots. One is the Western Ghats, which is the uh, Western Ghats es escarpment, a chain of mountain which run along the west coast of India. And then another one is the uh, Northeast India. So these two places are uh, very rich in biodiversity. And we focus most of our study in, in these two sites to understand the uh, diversity, like different species of diatoms. So uh, we can consider diatom as uh, one of the uh, uh, extremophiles as well, because uh, we can find diatoms in a place like a Lonar Crater Lake in Maharashtra, where the pH of water is more than uh, nine. And also this Meristika swamps in the Western Ghats, these are the acidic water uh, inside the forest of uh, um, Western Ghats. So where the pH is less than five, uh, sometimes it can go up to 3.74 as well. Uh, so in both the places, what we find, we find different species of diatom and we end up in describing new species of diatom from uh, all this extreme environment. As well as mm, this uh, on my left, you will see this mountain lake present at uh, 2,500 meter above mean sea level in uh, Munar in the Aravikulam National Park. It's completely pristine, pure sites. There is no human, nothing. There also you will find a new species. And then this on the right, this is a, uh, in the near the, um, uh, in Pune, one of the drain, like it was a river, it become a sewage drain. So there also you will find a new species. So what I'm trying to say with these two slides is, in irrespective of extremely clean or extremely bad environment, you find, tend to find the new species of diatom because it's, it's never been studied in detail before. So almost 40% of the, individuals we see are new species. So we, we always start with the ecological or a, a different question, but we end up in describing new species. New species at level of even the genus level, this uh, new genus Klukovistia, which we described from the lateritic plateaus of uh, Maharashtra. So apart from the aquatic uh, bodies like rivers and lake, uh, we accidentally looked into this uh, uh, when we are doing uh, field work in the Mizoram. We collected there was this heavy growth of moss on the uh, trees. So when we touched, there are some. Uh, it was there was it. We felt some moisture. Then we thought like there could be some diatom in the in this moss. So when we end, when we uh, uh, looked at the microscope. We found so many species and most of them are like, you know, new to science. So we are in the process of describing these species. So with this, uh, I will conclude my first part of my talk, which will be on introduction of diatom. Then now I will move on to the diatom-based environmental monitoring part. So <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, diatoms are very particular about their environment. It, environmental parameter in terms of physical diatoms are very specific to temperature and current. Uh, for example, the diatom which lives in a stream, it will not live in a uh, lake because they certain group of diatom, they, they, re, they require current for their living. The other group only prefer to live in a stagnant water body. And same with chemicals in terms of nutrients such as nitrate, phosphates, and then ions like different set of anions and cations, they also determine a uh, diatom uh, conditions. So combination of physical and chemical pro um, environment make decides what is the set of diatom live in a particular place. Uh, Shanti, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. very clear. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? I just, you can type, I think it's very clear, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Fine. There are so many messages. I am not reading the message, so that's why. No, I just... Afterwards. <laughs> okay. Fine. No problem. Yeah. So, uh, we study. Uh, okay. I'll get back to. <laughs> so we study diatom from uh, different environment in in India, like rivers, uh, lakes, streams, uh, you know, ponds and waterfalls. Uh, one of the particular very unique environment is uh, this Meristica swamps. It is a very, uh, uh, it's a forested wetland. Uh, it uh, completely under the water for like uh, most part of the year, like even up to six, seven months. Uh, they are like, you know, a relic forest. So only uh, very ancient species live in this particular uh, place. So what is peculiarity of the swamps are the water which stag gets stagnated here are um, very acidic in nature. So as I mentioned, the pH can go up to uh, four. So in these pictures, you see this uh, uh, diatoms, um, sorry, in the uh, water stagnated in the forest. And because of uh, prolonged water stagnation, the species which live, uh, the diet, uh, the trees which lives here, they developed the adaptation. Like it looks like a mangrove forest, but actually it is not like mangrove forest. It's very much in the inland on the mountain. So, uh, the, my uh, our student like uh, Mittal Thakkar, uh, she's working on this meristica swamp. She's collecting samples uh, from this acidic water here. So. Uh, in the Western Ghats, uh, usually they occur like, you know, in, in between a valley uh, where I'm highlighting. So there's uh, uh, meristic, members of Meristicacea tree grows there and this acidic uh, environment. So only uh, uh, we focused uh, to study the diatom of this particular uh, wetland and then uh, associated environment. So we found these Meristica swamps are there in some are in uh, uh, Maharashtra and Goa and Karnataka and then in Kerala. So uh, previously uh, some of the workers have uh, identified this Meristica swamps as I know archives of a uh, lot of uh, it's archives of unique biodiversity as on today but it is also archives of uh, you know past uh, uh, environmental condition. Uh, from our uh, group, uh, Dr. K. P. N. Kumaran uh, identified one uh, swam uh, in uh, in the uh, Konkan region of Maharashtra, and also they used this swam as a to reconstruct the past environmental condition. So we collected uh, a diatom sample from different habitat. If you see this sediments, and then on the bryophytes and uh, rocks, and then plants. Uh, from these swamps and we found uh, 98 uh, species of um, uh, diatom from this 13 meristica swamps in uh, Karnataka and out of this 97, 54 are uh, new to science. And we have described one new species also uh, belongs to the genus Germanella and we named this genus as, as uh, our new species as Germanella chandrani uh, the pictures you see is uh, Dr. M.D. Subhash Chandran. He's uh, working as a lecturer in a, a college in Kumta, a coastal town. He is the person behind identifying all these meristic swamps. So he, uh, he uh, did his PhD in uh, locating these meristic swamps. So in order to honor his work on this uh, meristic swamp, we named this species as Subhash uh, Chandrani. So what else we found was when we sampled this, um, so we sampled and we counted 600 individual diatom from each sample. And then we tried to correlate the environmental condition and the diatoms in that. So when we uh, did the canonical correspondent analysis, we classified the diatoms into uh, four different groups of diatoms. One is low pH preferring diatoms. And the another is like, the diatom which is which thrives in uh, low dissolved oxygen condition and low nutrient preferring diatom and high conductivity preferring diatom so we could classify these four group of diatom and in our subsequent uh, analysis we used these diatoms as a indicator to identify the environmental condition and also we used uh, how the swamps 
are deteriorating over time. So we identified the swamps with low nutrients. So typically, based on the historical uh, records, the swamps are very poor in nutrient con poor in nutrients. So that is the original condition because of human interference. These since the swamps always accumulate water. Uh, most of the agricultural land adjacent to the swamp try to drain the water from the swamp for the agricultural purpose. So because of that, the swamp, the originality of the swamp get damaged and then a lot of other species start coming and also the water quality get deteriorated. So the entire aquatic biodiversity in the swamps change over time. So that also we could able to document so how human interference changed the swamps into you know, clear swamp to moderately polluted to highly degraded swamps. So we understood the uh, current nature of the swamp. So we want to see the, what was the past condition of the swamp. We are trying to see what was the last 5,000 year history of the swamps. So we took a, a core from the swamp. So we retrieved a course of different, uh, around uh, most of our cores are like one meter core using a, a, a peat corer, we extracted this core. And then we, so in general, uh, we identify, we section the core in one centimeter by one centimeter, the entire uh, 100 centimeter core is divided into one centimeter by one, one centimeter. So we get 100 samples. So in each 100 samples, we check diatom and then we reconstruct, we make this plot where we can see the how the diatom community change over time. So this 80 centimeter bot is the oldest one and the, the uh, zero centimeter is the recent one. So this core we just complete, uh, we just completed and our samples to date this core is yet to be analyzed. It's, uh, we are supposed to analyze this, this time in Inter-University Accelerator Center at uh, Delhi. So this is not yet timed. So we are looking forward to get it uh, dated. So then we will have the exact history uh, when uh, was this events happen. So based on our diatoms, what we could uh, say is we classified the diatom into two groups, aquatic diatom and non-aquatic diatom. In the aquatic diatom, we classified into acetophilic diatom and neutral diatom. And in non-aquatic, it's all aerophilic diatom. So based on the diatom community, we, cla we could classify this entire uh, time into three. One is dry arid condition, oldest, and then intermittent wet condition, and then less ra uh, rainfall with acidic condition in the recently. So when we get a time, then we will be able to correlate this with a uh, global and then continent level uh, uh, environmental changes and then we would be able to see what we would be able to explain why these changes are happening in Western Ghats. The second work we did is from the Kas Plateau. Uh, this is one of the UNESCO heritage site which is located around 100 kilometers from Pune which is uh, one of the most uh, celebrated site because of this uh, you know highly colorful uh, flowering uh, post monsoon in October, uh, September, October we get this you know amazingly changing color uh, every 10 15 days so this is um, and there is a lake in the um, in the cast plateau so we try to uh, the assumption here is when we take a core so we will uh, the bottom of the core represent the oldest time and then mid the middle age and then that you know the recent time so diatom community changes uh, because of whatever the landscape level changes happening on the catchment, it will be reflected in the water and the water will uh, determine the diatom community in the lake. So when we retrieve a core and when we study the diatoms, we will be able to see what were the real changes happening in the past. So this is the cast study uh, in the cast uh, plateau. We could able to, uh, uh, we studied uh, 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 different and, uh, proxies like sponges, fungal, and then apart from diatoms also we study. So the major uh, uh, conclusion what we got in the CAS is, if you see this red uh, diatom, this uh, it's a uh, Alacosira granulata, 
which is a you know pollution tolerant item so this particular species was never there in the entire uh, and uh, sorry I forgot to mention this we have a dates this goes up to uh, around 8000 7655 years this is the uh, so approximately this entire core represent around 8000 year history of this uh, kas region so we got like you know intermittent no rain or arid condition and then like after around uh, 3000 year we have a very heavy rainfall and then uh, this uh, recent uh, appearance of this in last 1000 uh, uh, years or like plus 800 years we have this um, appearance of this particular species of diatom because of human I, it because of the human interference with the lake condition so uh, this uh, this is the fine level of information we can get it from the uh, diatom community so uh, the i'm done with the, my second part of using diatom in the modern and as well as the past environmental condition and i will diatom in archaeology so uh, application archaeology is not new it is very well established more than 20 uh, using uh, diatoms in uh, understanding the uh, paleo environmental conditions uh, one of the main source for diatom in archaeology is using the pottery so most even though uh, diatoms are extracted from different uh, archaeology i think your sound has broken up again sound has gone again uh, am i yeah. audible now yeah yeah back again think, now yeah okay i think yeah. over time my voice is going down <laughs> <laughs> no you are clear again in between it went okay okay so yeah oh. commonly used uh, archaeology type diatoms or uh, pottery it's, it's, uh, dr kartik it's, it's echoing the, again most of this work come from uh, dr kartik it's echoing again okay just yeah now uh, it's okay is it okay now yeah perfect yeah you can go back to the first is, is it okay now Yes, it's okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the most commonly used material uh, for uh, identification of diatom in archaeology is the uh, pottery. Even though there are other material used to uh, identify pottery, uh, identify diatoms are like building materials and terracotta structures and things like that. but diatoms are most commonly used which is established in the state i think uh, as far as like my uh, literature review says diatom uh, in europe and some part of uh, north america in other places uh, uh, diatom has never been used as a tool uh, uh chanti uh, is this mark is it's, somebody it's making it's echoing or, it's echoing a yeah. bit your your voice it's, uh, it's when i okay uh i will try to keep it little bit away and then speak a little louder sorry okay no 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 problem no problem we have time Interest Yeah. it just went off suddenly and it echoed a bit i think there's oh. some lag yeah yeah so uh study from uh, um uh, uh this particular study which comes from uh ireland uh, where uh, the using the tuff for a construction okay. as a construction material is very common in irish so uh in this one of the most uh, famous uh, site where they have um, uh you no it is an indicator to yeah. uh yeah everyone yeah this is a good suggestion uh, we can all switch off our video and audio yani has uh, suggested that 
and that maybe that will help maybe maybe it's this okay dr kartik maybe we'll all switch off uh, our video there's a little lag between uh, what you're saying so um everybody's microphone is off except mine i guess so i'll switch mine off also and uh, except okay. for yours uh, then we we carry on okay okay dr kartik let's just test it once more if you can just say something yeah uh, can you hear me now is yeah, it okay per perfect perfect okay okay so uh, in this uh, study site uh, uh, they identified the diatoms growing on the tough material the stuff is uh, from a peat bog no dr kartik your Able to your, your volume is lagging again your sound can you just say this again and we'll just check it once more it was perfectly clear in between okay yeah so uh uh from the uh, tough material to identify the uh, location of the diatoms is it okay is going off and on just say something now and we'll test it for the we'll test it okay just say something so, um, and now it's very clear very clear okay i think this is something to do with my internet i believe oh okay okay yeah just just a minute hold on is it better now yes yes much better much better okay. i'll switch yeah i'll switch my mic off also okay no problem sorry i think it's my internet that's fine we are all having internet problems for us yeah. also so that's not a problem yeah okay so uh so based on the uh, uh diatom from the, uh, the uh uh this maybe maybe there's a suggestion dr bala that you can switch off your video and just use the audio that will maybe save some uh, help uh, if there's a suggestion okay. from a participant it's a good idea so maybe you can just switch off your video and then maybe the audio will be better one minute okay no worries we are, we expect technical glitches so please please bear with us beyond our control is it okay yeah fine fine okay <coughs> carry on okay uh, shanti if the audio breaks just uh, that what's happening yeah so far it's clear okay so uh, in in this particular study uh, 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 archaeology like diatom is studied uh, diatom from different uh, material and they could identify that this turf were transported from a low elevation to this higher elevation sites and also they could able to tell the diatoms from the floors are uh, are high, highly damaged when compared uh, so based I think your audio is still fluctuating a bit oh so uh It, it's going on but now it's carry on okay yeah <clears throat> so um uh they uh they could they be used as a uh, a, a differentiating material to identify the archaeological features such as walls and roof uh, and etc in in an another study uh um, it's a fa very famous uh, diatomist uh, hanover hackensen 
she identified diatom from neolithic pottery and by identifying a diatom from 200 uh, different uh, shreds of uh, pottery so so diatoms have a very unique uh, distribution pattern so diatom uh, which we get in western ghats or like in the mountain we will not get in a deccan plateau or elsewhere so we can use uh, can easily say whether it's okay please say whether this clay is locally sourced or this clay is imported from elsewhere and occur in fresh water and brackish water are completely different set of diatoms so we can say whether the water used sourced locally or like you know exported or like imported from somewhere and we can even tell whether this river ओके I don't know <laughs> okay it's clear as it? it's clear now we, as long as it's clear we'll continue whenever it goes off i'll tell you yeah tell me maybe okay. i can sign out and log in okay okay yeah. then we we, we it maybe that will be better or just, just let's continue a bit sure yeah okay so uh and this study from uh, north america uh, which shows that um, uh, a site in uh, uh, florida based on the studying the diatom from the pottery they could able to conclude there are three different ethnic group use have a three set of diatoms in their pottery because these ethnic groups area so they their water is different so the clay is different so they have a different set of diatom different set of people and then sometime the people also exchanged this pottery which is like which is also ev evident from uh, the uh, diatoms and then the people movement between one ethnic group to another ethnic group and also exchanged potteries groups and uh, this is one very interesting paper from kligman so i am just putting one uh, hypothesis proposed uh, in his paper but there are uh, very detailed uh, uh, a uh, hypothesis proposed in his paper which shows that you know how to interpret the diatoms in the uh, potteries so here uh, he is trying to say that you know how to uh, when you have a local source and local manufacture you it can be a like it end up in a local part and similarly like imported clay imported part and then exported clay we can predict different uh, scenarios uh, on origin of parts and then in terms of i'll come to indian scenario <clears throat> uh even though we have a lot of studies i'm just putting some studies here we have thousands of studies which deals with the potteries from harappan sites and also different sites you know we have done lot of works on uh, physics and chemistry of the pottery chemistry to extend even we identified even the carbon nanotubes in the uh, keeladi potteries which is a very recent study but uh, in terms of biology nothing has been done um, from the uh, biology side so uh, i wish to uh, i think this is the case of both uh, in in uh, in harappan sites and also all other sites so in this particular site from excavation from uh, keeladi so they have identified a uh, lot of structure which is of very interesting in terms of diatoms because here they shows that you know a, a brick flooring so the brick has to be baked somewhere and it need water and it need soil so this is one interesting source for diatom and also uh, brick drains so these drains must be used for you know uh, for uh, either to intake of pure water or to discharge of the sewage water and even 
the pure water and discharge and uh, sewage water diatom can be completely uh, there are different uh, set of diatoms thrive in the pure clean water and the sewage water so that could be also identified and again uh, uh, like you know breach channel on the bottom left and then pottery is on the right so completely all this thing can be explored for uh, diatom which has never been explored and from uh, archaeological sites what are the material which can contain diatom is as i mentioned pottery sheds which will have clay and water and dry material uh, most of our sites uh, harappan sites and all other sites uh, we keeps reading that you know uh, there is a you know very well developed uh, drainage system for uh, input and output water so the same uh, can be uh, clearly identified by diatom um, because diatom have a very unique environmental preference and also most of the sites have terracotta structures which is also uh, have diatoms in it and then i think you have also have again. this paleo yeah. channel concept yeah okay uh, many uh, sites also having this uh, paleo channels which is like you know previously this uh, there was a channel and it's covered up or something like that so that can also be identified and also within a site whether uh, we can identify the sites which are related to water you see whether pond was there or uh, even uh, inside a home whether uh, whether we always identify this is a kitchen drain so that identified by a diatom because a different set of species thrives in such a similar water uh, condition so with uh, this i uh, conclude my talk and i am ready to take questions and i thank uh, my funding agencies uh, for funding all the research and my all by my students uh, and thanks to sharma center for heritage and education education shanti and akilesh for giving me this opportunity to